Well, good afternoon, everybody. Today we have a, a panel about the uh, mobile trends of uh, e-commerce. And for that, today we have with us uh, some very relevant guests, I think. First, we have uh, Lucas Carnet, um, founder of Privalia. Then we have uh, Jauma Goma, um, CEO of Ula Box. And then we have Mar Vicente, uh, CEO of Rakuten in Spain. Um, the first thing I would like to do is to ask our guests to introduce themselves and probably to talk about their companies. So, Lucas, what, what are you doing at, at Privalia? And Thank you, Angel. Um, at Privalia, we help people to dress better and save money. We are a daily fashion outlet. Every day we put uh, about 5,000 new SKUs of uh, mainstream fashion brands on sale at a 50 to 70 percent discount on regular retail price to now uh, around 20 million members in five geographies, Spain, Italy, and Germany in Europe, and Brazil and Mexico in Latin America. Okay. We are uh, around 500 million euro company in revenues with uh, 850 people around five offices in those regions. Okay. Jauma. Uh, good afternoon to all. Thanks, Angel. Thanks to all of you for being here. Uh, I'm co-founder and, and CEO of, of Ulabox.com. Ulabox.com is a software company that runs the first 100% online supermarket in Spain. So it's a very challenging scene of, of the e-commerce. Uh, I would say that I represent a smaller uh, company here in the, in the, on the stage. So we are a 2.5-year uh, company, uh, st still building our, our core business, building assortment. We have grown from uh, 600 SKUs to 10,000, more than 10,000 that we have today. We, we are still building our, our service deployment in, in all, uh, all Spain and we are still programming and improving the functionalities of our website. Even though we have a, a fully uh, operational um, supermarket online that is starting to compete with all big players in, in this country. We have more than 25,000 customers with high recurrency and having a, a very interesting uh, growth for the last uh, 2013, growing per three compared to 2012 and reaching very nice figures. So starting to push a bit and trying to innovate in, in retail of uh, groceries. Thanks, Gemma. Mark, what Good. are you doing at Rakuten? Good afternoon, and thank you for having me here, actually. So um, I'm the CEO of Rakuten in Spain. Uh, Rakuten is a Japanese company. Uh, we are one of the biggest, actually, e-commerce companies worldwide. We, are into, we operate into the e-commerce, finance, and digital business and I'm taking care of implementing this business into Spain. So what we do, the core of our business is actually a B2B2C marketplace, or in other words, we are a shopping mall. So we have been working into Spain for the last uh, almost one year. Um, for this one year, we got uh, more than one million products and 500 shops operating onto our e-commerce. And of course, mobile is a very important and really one topic for our day-to-day -day business. Thank you. So. Today, we, the, the, the topic of today is mobile trends in, in e-commerce. So probably the first thing is to take a look at the, the current connected device. We can see that PCs are no longer the major device used to get connected to the internet. And we are seeing the mobile booming and probably smartphones and tablets uh, and, and keep growing as a connected device to, to internet. And this is also affecting, of course, e-commerce. In this, in this slide uh, from our friends of Business Insider, we can see that mobile today is 20% of e-commerce traffic. And, and I think that I can add that it's also 10% of the sales. And this is something that maybe we can, we can see in the, your different business because you have different business in, 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 in e-commerce. So my first question following this, this data that we have here is, how each of your companies are doing currently in the mobile e-commerce? Because I think that you have different business models, different approaches to the mobile e-commerce, and it's probably going to be very interesting for the people here to understand different strategies or, or approaches to, to, to the mobile e-commerce. So 
Lucas, you, you are the first one, probably the next one is going to start by, by, by Mark, but now, how are Prevalia doing in, in right now? We are doing very, very well. I, I would say that uh, mobile is the biggest thing that happened to the company in the last three years. In 2010, we started to look at the smartphones and the tablets as a potential channel to meet and sell to our customers. But right now, in Spain, for example, uh, we are doing 45% of sales on mobile and uh, more than 65% of, of visits taking place in mobile devices. So mobile is now the channel. We will be more mobile than la laptop or desktop in 2014. And if uh, we should start Prevalia right now, we should think on a mobile company or at least on a first mobile approach company. Okay, so what you are saying is that if tomorrow you start another online sales company, you will focus in mobile rather than PCs or? No, what I was saying is that if I should uh, create a business like Privali again, mm -hmm. I would do it mobile first. And what we think and what we have experienced is that mobile potential depends not in the mobile per se, but in the business model. Privalia is a high recurrency business model. Uh, an average uh, user visits us twice per week, and a heavy user visits us every day. We have limited product for limited time on sale at very, very attractive discounts. So with this business model, having a device which is all the time with you, where you are able to open an email or an alert with a specific offer for you is key. It's key for the user experience and it's key for Privalia. And the demonstration of that is that uh, people uh, visiting us both in web and in mobile has uh, three times more uh, frequency of usage than a pure web uh, customer. Uh, and what we have uh, made thanks to mobile is that when converting traditional web customers to multi-channel customers, their frequency of visit and their revenue spent in Privalia has grown like 40% after versus before becoming multi-channel. So it's clear in your case, in the case of Privalia, that the future, is, 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 the future of e-commerce online sales is, is mobile. It's clear from, from your numbers. You said 45%. In, in, in sales, and the average is around 20%, so you are clearly over. I, I, I think 20% in traffic. It's traffic, right? We are 65% in traffic, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. in sales is around 10%, so in both cases you are clearly over, um, over the average. That probably is related with the, with the business model. Mm -hmm. Jauma, uh, what about Ulabos? How are you doing currently? Uh, we, in we, we born in 2011, so we born mobile. And, and we are a tech company, so when we build Ula Box, we, we build it thinking about mobile because mobile is a difference. Also, it's technology makes the difference in Ula Box. Mobile makes the difference. So we are the the only supermarket in Spain that can be managed fully managed through a mobile. So I, I can manage the company uh, with a smartphone or with a tablet, or of course a, a desktop. So first management. Second, uh, it's about uh, usage. So how users can interact with the platform. We born with a uh, full responsive site in for tablets, friendly site for tablets. Sorry, uh, with an iPhone app and uh, building an, an Android app. That when we were starting the, the programming of, of the or the, the coding of the of the supermarket, and today we also have been uh, working after one year working in in our deployment for responsive design. We are fully responsive in all devices. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's, that makes a difference because we are the only supermarket in Spain that it's full operational in every single device in every single context. And that makes that we have uh, around 60% in, in, in email openings through mobile devices. We have close to 44, 45% in terms of audience in traffic and converting uh, sales uh, around 35% of overall sales are coming from tablets and smartphones. 
Okay. So for being a supermarket, it, it's, it's quite huge. What about traffic? Do you have the data for traffic? In traffic is around 45%. 45, okay. So in sales, we have 45, we have 35. What about Mark? What about Rakuten? How are you doing in, in probably it's a different uh, business model, but yes. how are you um, doing? And as well, a different timing. So first, I'm going to give you two point of view. So first, the Japanese point of view. So you okay. know Japan is a very mature market where Rakuten has been operating for a long time. We actually have a, a market penetration of the 80% across all our business. So uh, Rakuten share for traffic and turnover is actually very close to 50%. So what as well this is telling you is, is actually the conversion is equal into mobile, combining mobile devices and tablets than the traditional PC there. Um, what it generates as well uh, like the same or even a longer lifetime value from the customers. So Spain is a completely different picture because actually we launched it in October. Uh, we started releasing our responsive uh, mobile and different apps through uh, EOS, Android, and Windows one month later, so November, so that's only four months ago. But since we started, uh, without making any specific push from a natural view, we are already receiving uh, more than 25% of our traffic through mobile and our turnover is around 17%. So our conversion is actually lower still than PC, but as well this is because there is a big fragmentation between tablets and mobile. So mobile, what we see is that the customer go there, check the information, and then they go into the PC, onto the tablet, and they buy it. So actually 20% of our sales through the PC are coming from customers who before uh, seek information into the mobile. And, and then we got the tablet with, whose conversion is actually probably 10 times higher than mobile and probably uh, six times higher than, than PC. But still in a very early stage. Well, it, it's interesting. I mean, what you are saying is that um, your customers are taking a look first in mobile and they are closing the, 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 the sales in PCs. That is just the opposite that you are seeing in, in, in Ulabox or? Well, I would say that Ulavox is a, a multi-channel okay. understanding uh, desktop, uh, tablet, and smartphone as different channels to access to Ulavox. So uh, it's like multi-channel uh, value proposition. Mm -hmm. So you can start your, your shopping uh, at home with your tablet, sitting on the sofa, like more entertainment experience. It's a different context. Uh, when you you are at, at the office and you decide to uh, add, for example, two more products that your wife has said that uh, it's missing in the in the shopping cart, mm. and when being after uh, after work uh, you are having some beers in a bar and you remind that you forgot to buy beer, you can add it through the through the app or through the responsive uh, via smartphone. So I would say the customer is uh, one customer that has different ways to access to the supermarket mm. depending on the context that he's taking decisions on how to buy and how to, to end its, its shopping cart. Um, I can see, and correct me if, if I'm wrong, that probably in Privalia we can see customers doing a much more passionate purchase and probably buying something in an online supermarket is a much more rational, call it rational. Um, how do you work on that? I mean, how do you take this in consideration in order to define the tool or, 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 or to define the strategy. Um, the fact that this is a much more, you need much more passion and you need more, much more rational in the, in that, in the say. Well, in the case of Privalia, there's one uh, key issue, which is speed. Mm -hmm. uh, you open your sale, then you have thousands of people browsing, looking for their size. So getting there and doing the checkout as fast as possible is very important. And in, in mobile devices, this is challenging. First, because your speed depends on the networks. And I mean, 3G connections, which are the most common right now, uh, depending where and which uh, operator is not the, the, the best possible speed. Uh, and another thing that we have uh, also experienced, which is very relevant for, for speed, is that usually people, when they browse mobile, they do uh, much more uh, visits during the day, but these visits are shorter, and in these short visits, they browse products very quickly. So 
designing the um, app or the web app in order to maximize speed of uh, product browsing despite of the connection is a big, big challenge we, we have. Another challenge, obviously, is that there are many platforms, many mobile devices, many screen mm -hmm. sizes, and uh, you have to provide the best experience for each one of them. No? Now in Privalia, we are reaching 98% of the devices. We launched first uh, iOS, then Android, then Windows, and now also um, BlackBerry. But this is another complexity that obviously you have to deal, to deal with. Then there's also a third important issue when mm -hmm. designing your, your mobile uh, web, which is the checkout. Uh, in this uh, fast, passionate, Privalia purchases, you can be in the bus. So you can be um, buying the product uh, surrounded by people. So the fact of having the credit card already saved there uh, is also very important. The okay. checkout process speed is much more important than, than the web. So these are probably the three big okay, so challenges regarding usability. Speed, design, and checkout are the, the three ones. What about in Ula Box? I would say that mobile for us, understanding mobile as smartphone uh, device and, and, and full mobility or extreme mobility context, it's, it's, uh, it serves uh, Ulabox like uh, impulse, first of all. So I remind of something that I didn't uh, take into account to put in my shopping cart so I can add it easily. So when it comes to my, uh, to my mind, I add it to the shopping cart and persist till I finish the, the, shopping, the, the shopping decision. And secondly, it's when I'm a, a heavy user of, of the supermarket shopping experience in Ulabox, I can recur, I can repeat my last, uh, my, my last card mm -hmm. very easily, very fast. Speed is always important in, in, in e-commerce. So just clicking one button, I can have my, my credit card saved and with less than one minute I can repeat this uh, this shopping cart and, and get it at home the day after. So I would say that it's first impulse and second repetition. Okay. Mark, comments Good. on that? So actually I'm going to focus on the loyalty part. So we are not super aggressive on the, the, the acquisition. Of course we are good and we try to do everything we can to provide good offers, but the, the true value of Rakuten is actually being very secure on the loyalty of our customers. So we have our loyalty plan, which it, we, we call Rakuten Super Points. So customers accumulate points that they can, they can use in the future shops. And at the same time, you got this kind of shopping experience through not one checkout, but multiple checkouts, because, mm -hmm. because you're buying into different shops at the same time. So transfer this experience to the mobile experience is quite challenging for us. And, and to make sure that the speed purchase, the repeat rate from the customers is not the same, but even better than from the, from the one single channel is very important. And as well as we were talking here, for us the big, big challenge is not how we manage one of these channels, but how we integrate them all. So there is no one customer for mobile, no one customer for PC, and another one for tablet. It's exactly the same guy behaving in a different way across the different devices. And for us, to measure every single one of the KPIs for how this customer is behaving through the different ones is the key priority. So of course, Usability, different platforms, everything is very important. But the, the integration and making sure we replicate the loyalty value of our business model into mobile is the most important topic. OK. That's very interesting to see how different approaches to the mobile e-commerce in different companies uh, provides a different, mm -hmm. different, different inputs. Um, we have been talking about the current situation of your business in mobile with 45%, with 35%, uh, and with 20% in, in sales in each of your company. Let's talk about the future. The fact the panel is about the future. How do you see the future of your company in mobile e-commerce? What challenge, uh, what things do you think, which volumes do you think you are going to achieve? Which challenges do you think you have to, to, to have in the future about that? Yauma. Wow. Uh, future. Well, you are the CEO, you have to yeah, deal with course, that. Of course, but I, I would say, first of all, it, it's not about future. So mobile is here and it's, it's huge already. So I would say that we cannot stop it and, and, and what we will do is to accelerate it. So we will try to be 
much more integrating uh, all different channels, so desktop, tablet, and smartphone. We are also focusing on integrating wearables and other devices. So Internet of Things, it's, it's becoming a really huge opportunity and, and, and a very strong space to, to find out how to reach business, how to integrate in the whole strategy. And also uh, focusing on, on making things very easy of use. So the easiness of use, it's, it's key in, in all this uh, complexity of, of integration and, and, and usage in between different devices make things really fast. So I would say that mobile, it's, it's getting very deeply in society, uh, apart from many things, it's especially for, for the velocity of our times. So speed is, is really key. And also, uh, giving this, this, this chance to the people to have a persistent shopping experience over, over all these devices. So you, you can have a fridge connected to Lovox saying how many beers you have in, in the refrigerator and, and order automatically when, uh, when it's the, the, the stock limit, the stock uh, start to, to enter into a limit that requests this more product to be, to be served. So we have huge opportunities uh, in, in integrating Internet of Things apart from mobile. Okay, so what you're saying is that the wearables of the Internet of Things is going to be a really helpful tool in order to understand better the customer needs and then try yeah. to, to, yeah. to approach and, in a better and, world. And let the, let the mobile and this, this, uh, this open world and this speedy world that we are moving get much more integrated in the shopping experience. Okay. What, what about the, the volume of sales? Right now we are saying that you are around 35. Uh, what do you see the future? I mean, do you see moving to something like uh, 80, yeah. 90 percent? Or, or well, I, I would say for the the for uh, the four coming years, I would say around 55, 60. Okay. Hmm. Lucas, how do you see the future of Privalia in mobile e-commerce? Uh, volumes, challenge, well, in opportunities. Terms of, in terms of volume, I think it will go almost full on mobile? You mean 100%? Yes. Uh, now we have a big opportunity, which is also a challenge, because mobile is starting to have a big impact not only in sales and, and traffic, but in new customer acquisition. Mm -hmm. We are acquiring almost 50% of our new buyers now through mobile and 25% uh, uh, thanks to the download of our app that we have been able to uh, locate consistently top five in the iTunes store, on the, uh, the Android yeah. store, in lifestyle category. And uh, this is now providing us uh, a base of pure mobile customers. We have probably almost 30% of people that only interact with Privali in the mobile. And these people have better economics because of the higher frequency than our regular customer. Okay. So we have reached a new uh, universe of potential clients that are already there. And we know that are already there because in Spain there's 2.9 million people that do uh, buy on mobile devices and do buy any clothes or footwear on mobile devices. And this is probably six times more than the current uh, active customers that we have today in Spain. So there's a big opportunity there. And uh, this opportunity is starting to materialize at a very um, big volume. So this is something we are now putting a lot of effort on. Also, I guess mobile, apart from the current challenges that any uh, e-commerce business has, will bring uh, new ones and new opportunities, like how are gonna we gonna use the uh, location information on the mm -hmm. customer yes. to uh, send them a better offer or to, I mean, get more value from from them. This is something that we are not thinking about at all right now, but it, it may be an opportunity in the future. What, what about the wearables? I mean, it's, it's, it's something that you are, it's something that it, to some extent could be related with the fashion life experience, some wearables that you can wear. It's something that you are 
seeing an opportunity for the future, wearables in your sales process or, or, or getting more information about your customers? Yes, yeah, but uh, we need to uh, learn okay. about it. So clearly, Privalia future is, is, is mobile. I mean, it's 30% mm -hmm. of customers that are just becoming mobile customers and, and, and better customers, by mm -hmm. the way. Mark. Good. So when, when we talk about numbers, first of all, and when I see like first four years, so the first thing I imagine more than numbers is actually, I imagine in a scenario where the new generation of the customers is gonna go straight to the mobile. And the question is not really gonna be how much of your turnover or traffic share comes through mobile, but how many people you still have remaining into PC. Probably, because I can totally see tablet replacing 100% a lot of the shopping experience that today we are, uh, the customers are still having into the PC. Um, of course, it's all about the speed and the penetration of the market. Probably in our case, I will not be surprised if we are higher than 50% into Spain in four, in four years. Um, and probably, um, I mean, I will not be surprised if it's much more, to be honest. So I think you, you, you were talking about a very important topic, the wearable devices. Actually, for us at Rakuten, we, we don't really discuss anymore a lot about mobile. We really discuss a lot about wearable devices. We don't have a, a mobile manager or a mobile executive officer. We have a wearable devices executive officer. And for us, <clears throat> which is very important for wearable, is how do you use the advantages of re this real technology is offering? This is not only about opening another shop and just providing another channel. So consider it a good acquisition channel. It's good. It's very important. It's the first thing to look for the ROI. But at the end of the day, what it becomes very important is to use the real advantages that these kind of wearable devices offer you. So for example, the, the smart TVs are connected to the, the real e-commerce platforms at real time, or you get the smart watch, which can provide you information about your heartbeats, and it can give you exactly the right time that you need to take a pill, and stuff like that. So I think that making the mobile technologies clever in order to have more information about the customer, it has to become very relevant. But to be honest, I'm not sure we are talking about two years or four years, and probably as it normally happens, the, the penetration will be very different for, for, for different markets at the same time. The same for the real mobile technologies we're using today, only for the mobile. So geo-segmentation, uh, where the geolocalization of the customers. So many people is having the shop online, not many people is still using the real advantages of the mobile to, to offer a good value to the customers. And I think uh, there are many few companies who started as PC and became mobile that are really using it. The, the ones who are really using it are the ones naturally born as mobile who really think this way. And there are a lot of examples of that. And I think that all the traditional PC e-commerce companies, we need to think a lot. We need to think a lot, uh, not only the shop opening, but as well the mobile experience taking profit off. Okay, very interesting. Um, we have been talking about the, the, how your sales are, go, are doing in, in mobile. Let's talk a little bit about the customers. I mean, how they are shopping in mobile versus how they are shopping in, in, in the PCs. Um, what are the needs of uh, every different customers? Let's, let's, let's discuss a little bit uh, about that. Taking in consideration probably that the customers at the end sometimes are the same customer, but they are buying sometimes in the PCs and sometimes are buying in the, in the mobile. So, uh, Lucas, how do you see that in, in, in Privalia? Or probably you, you are moving to everybody to become a, a, a mobile? <laughs> yeah, that, that's clearly our goal. And, well, I, I think I, I talked about that. What we see is that they, they use us in shorter periods of time, much more frequent, mm -hmm. and they browse faster. So, I mean, we need to adapt to that in usability. Probably uh, you can do a video of a catwalk for a suit which converts very well in the web, but it may not work okay. with current 3G connections in the mobile. So, I mean, I think the, the, the customer will be the same. The browsing experience will be a little bit different. And uh, the design of the, of the web web app needs to be different because the size of the handset, because of the speed of the connectivity, because of the place where they do the purchase. But uh, uh, our challenges as a business 
are not necessarily different. Okay. I mean, now we are thinking about segmentation of the offer, personalization of the showroom, uh, decreasing lead time, uh, having more availability of uh, products for certain categories, and this has nothing to do with the mobile. Yoma. First of all, uh, I would say that uh, we have a lot, a lot to learn from how to uh, treat, how to manage these, these users when going to mobile. But the, the first figures that we have is that uh, we are succeeding in converting better, spending more time, and uh, having higher tickets from tablet than from desktop or PC. So it means that uh, tablet is, is giving us better figures, better, better information, or, or better experience to, to our customers. Uh, when we moved to responsive, also mm. we increased our, our conversion rates, our time span, our, uh, our ticket in all devices, but especially in mobile, in smartphones. Even though it's far, far away from the conversion that we can get from desktop or we can get from, from tablet. So we have a lot of things to, to work on and, and to do with, with the smartphone. So the smaller it's the, it's the screen, the more uh, challenging it's, it's the, the work that we have to do to, to convert better. Also, I, I, would, I would say it's remarkable how big are becoming screens in, in smartphones. So the last, the last devices I've seen, it's, it's this uh, tablet concept. So it's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. So <coughs> this is going to make things easier for us. And, and we have to, to take this opportunity as a, a very interesting one. So it's going to make things easier to, to put our content and to make much more visible and, and, and easy to convert. But from, from today, uh, what we see is better uh, experience and better conversions in, in tablet, secondly, uh, desktop, and third, smartphones. You said, sorry, if I'm, I'm in lesson, that you have better tickets in, in mobile or in, in, or in... Better tickets in... in desktop. I would say that all KPIs are better in, in, in tablet, afterwards desktop, and the third one is it's smartphones. What about you? Um, well, I, I want to make a comment because uh, I think uh, we should change our mindset in terms of how we talk about conversion. Okay. Um, when we started, uh, we were calculating conversions for the different devices. And at the beginning, three years ago, there were many people in the company uh, claiming like if uh, conversion in mobile is half of the web, then we shouldn't push mobile because this is going to be very negative. But what we learned after analyzing a customer across all the channels is that the right way to look at conversion is conversion per customer or how the combined channel experience okay. uh, affects your customer conversion. Because we have many people that converse more in the website because they browse much more in the mobile device. So this change from conversion based on um, orders to visit in one device versus visits or orders per customer across channel mm -hmm. is a very important change for any company that wants to really analyze the impact of mobile in their business. Okay. okay. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a very good point. It's like when you compare into the website, if you compare visits or unique visitors or mm -hmm. page views, it completely mm -hmm. changes the picture. So the unique users are not for only one platform for, for all the different devices. It's a good point. Ha having said that, I think it's key that you try to maximize conversion per channel because, well, at least in Privalia, now 50% of the emails are open in mobile devices. So the ideal world would be that the people opening this email wouldn't have any challenge to really have the same shopping experience that in the website. So mm -hmm. he or she shouldn't wait to get home or get to a computer to do it because probably the product will be gone. OK, OK. Uh, let's try to, to find, if any, bad things about mobile e-commerce. I mean, um, all we are saying is that there's are good things. So let's try to find, I don't know if it's security or mobile payment or something like that could be an, an issue for the future or something that you believe, or maybe there is everything is perfect in the mobile space. I would like to, or the, the people really want to know your opinion about the, any potential bad things of any uh, threat that you can see in the mobile sales. Mark. 
So first of all, uh, if I have to talk in behalf of my customers, or at least the information I got from my customers, I can clearly see that they are significantly less afraid and concerned on the security for mobile in, in terms of shopping than the one they experience into the PC. And that could be two, for two reasons. One, it could be because it is a reality that they feel secure. Or it could be just because they are early adopters, much more into the e-commerce, and they know how to handle much better the things. But from a company point of view, what I can clearly tell you is that the level of frauds and that we can experience into mobile, we are experiencing into mobile today as a company, are at least 10 times lower through mobile devices than that you can see in PC. Reasons are quite obvious. You know, you got the device, it's actually, it's actually quite not handled just to try to make a, a, a fraud with something that you own and you move with it. Um, for, for whatever reason, if we talk about uh, ROI, acquisition cost, lifetime value, just this 10 times less fraud into mobile for us, it makes a huge difference at the time to invest. For the customer, to be honest, I think we are still, not, not on the early adopters, but we're still in a situation where the customers don't fear it, don't fear it at all. Of course, there is a lot of topics about um, <clears throat> the sensitivity of the customer information. When you get access to the, to the all potential information from the customer, when the customer makes, for example, a Facebook connect in ten, instead of a, a, a direct register, it can become very sensitive. But in our e-commerce industry, I cannot see really any threat in terms of security right now. Okay, any comment on that? Not in security, but I mean, ob it's obviously a, a challenge, and you may think that this is the negative side of, of this disruptive mobile growth, uh, that it brings a lot of complexity, incremental complexity to your company. Okay. And, well, you have to lead with that complexity. Yeah, I would add that apart from complexity, also the, the speed of change, the speed of evolution that we need to 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 push in our company. So it's <coughs> things are changing even faster when when going to mobile. So we need to adapt even faster to reality, mm. and that would be complementing what what mm. Mark said. That it's uh, full agree, and and also what what Lucas was saying. Okay, and I think so, sorry, just let me one point. When we talk about this complexity, it's actually one one important topic for me. When we are into the move of analyzing the customer behavior through all these different channels, this is not, not impossible, but very difficult <coughs> if you are not into a proper technological platform and you get into big data and you you completely transform your company. So our, our company, we the people who is making this kind of analysis, so the marketing team actually is uh, statistical and maths people, and they take care of all the the big data through the business intelligence systems. So if you don't really get there and make the proper investment, you will probably not understand why the things are happening the way they are happening. And so this in complexity, it means money on the investment at the end. Incremental okay. complexity, as Lucas said. So tracking a customer in the three different channels, how it interacts, how come, yes. how, uh, how uses each channel and, and how it finally converts with cost and lifetime value, it's, it's really, really huge effort. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, very, very interesting. We are going to, to start to get questions uh, in, in the following minutes, so probably there are some entrepreneurs uh, willing to start an e-commerce or something like that that we might have uh, interesting questions. Um, but before that, I would like to see your view about, let's say, forward future. I mean, what things, what technologies, what, uh, I mean, big data, uh, wearables, what things, do, the way that you believe that we are going to keep buying in the following, I mean, 10 years from now, people is going to keep using um, mobile to do sale, to do purchase, or to do e-commerce. I mean, how do you see that? Any, any, any disruption, something that you, um, I think that is difficult. Forecasts are difficult, especially about the future, of course. Um, but what's your view? What other things can come to the table that might affect the mobile e-commerce? Mark. So going back to the wearable devices, if I imagine the future in terms of these kind of topics, what I imagine is everything connected through mobile technologies. So I'm not talking about mobile devices, whatever it is. I'm not talking about wearable devices, whatever it is, mobile tablet or, or whatever all device, or wearable devices like glasses or watch. I'm talking about traditional technology things. I'm talking about managing the, the power of the technology or the energy in your home with the mobile 
with the mobile technologies. I'm talking about managing the cleaning of your clothes, absolutely everything through the domotics, uh, through your mobile technologies. So I can see a feature where everything gets totally integrated, not only with the external technologies, but as well with, as I was saying, with yourself. Because you can provide a lot of information to these devices, and this information can be uh, used by the companies in order to, to satisfy, better, satisfy better what you need or what you need even be before that you know that you need it. So, but how, how the e-commerce companies is going to have access to this big data that is not in your hands? I mean, or you are going, you have to create something to, to have access to this data that is uh, very relevant for your sales process. Uh, how do you see that? Well, uh, at the end, somehow, if the things get connected through one specific operative system, the information will be connected to one single uh, level, which is the unique ID of one customer mm -hmm. through the different devices. And everyone will be kind of fighting for having the ownership of this ID. Because once you have this information, you can not only interact with that customer for what you do, but for, all, for what all the other companies do. And I can imagine a situation where I have a, a specific bunch of services that I can offer to my customer, but because I have many more information from that customer, I can set up other agreements with other companies to improve better the experience of the customer. In other words, uh, I can connect that with what Rakuten does at a global, a global level. So Rakuten is an ecosystem. So as I was telling you, um, we, we have banking services, security, travel, e-commerce, absolutely everything into Japan. When you connect everything through one ID and you put it all together through different technologies is when you can handle this information. But to have the ownership of this ID and this information is going to be the most critical topic. Okay. Jauma, Lucas, comments on that? Yeah, I, I would say that... It, um, ten years, I uh, was uh, about to say four, but ten years, I, I can see, first of all, Ulla Box leading supermarkets in, uh, online supermarkets in Spain for sure. So <laughs> that, that's going to change the, the rules and <laughs> that's going to be very disruptive. And, and I can imagine uh, watching TV maybe and watching uh, a commercial on TV and having the chance to okay. be a voice or be a, uh, moving my hand, add it to Ulla Box card and, and receive it same day or the day after at home. So th that could be an example of how traditional devices like fridge, TV, and whatever we, we can imagine can interact with, with, with e-commerce. And afterwards also, uh, I would talk about cars. I would say that uh, cars is also uh, space. Could, we could talk about a device that it can be connected. It's becoming uh, to, to, to a, a connected device that it's just one person driving for the moment. We'll see for, for how long we keep driving cars. But there's uh, the rest of the family waiting to, to arrive somewhere. Hmm. So this is spare time. You, 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 are, you are there, blocked, stuck. So we can use cars to, to, to get connected to our digital lives and, and convert to, to sales. Also, uh, of course, undergrounds and whatever. In your case, maybe refrigerators as well. Could yeah, be, um, as I said at the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you doing something this way with the refrigerators? Or? For the moment, what we're doing is dreaming and focusing on our today reality. <laughs> but, <laughs> but of course, we, we have it on, on, our, on our five years uh, uh, vision. And, and, and also looking at uh, people like Samsung. We've been visiting them in the showrooms and trying to understand how they are. Uh, integrating all these devices, uh, washing machines, refrigerators, uh, TVs, everything to understand how we can uh, combine all of them and, and extract value and convert this value to much value even to the user. Okay, so you're selling, selling through much more devices that will be connected and probably getting some important data from these devices. And, uh, also, and also saving time to people. So. Why do I have to remind of uh, my beer stock, my water stock, my milk stock, something that it, it's, it's, it's really... Uh, make my life easier. Yeah. We are selling time. We are not selling products. So make people's life easier. Interesting. We are not selling time. We are not selling products. We are selling time. Convenience, yeah. <laughs> Lucas, how do you see the future? Is this... <coughs> It's I don't hard know. To, hard to yeah, it's hard to imagine. I mean, we could imagine someone with smart glasses just looking at other people's dresses and see their uh, online avatar in real time and then browsing for the best price or just ordering. Or maybe not even ordering, just having a 3D printer 
and you transfer that to home, and when you get there, you have your dress. I don't know. Okay. But y y you were asking uh, about this information of all the devices connected. Mm -hmm. Who is going to handle or own this information? I, I would bet that either uh, Amazon, Google, Facebook, or Apple will sell this information, and this will become probably a new business unit for them. And you will be able to pay for that? If uh, it has a return, of course. of course. Okay, I don't know if we have any, any question or any comment. Um, there are several, good. Hi, um, this question is maybe more geared toward Rakuten with your recent acquisition of Fiber. How would you, um, how would Fiber incorporate the new like 300 plus million users and how would that affect the e-commerce business? Or Good. how do you see it? So actually, I was waiting for the Viber question, actually. I was like thinking, how many are going to be? Um, so first of all, that actually, this acquisition is actually very recent. Um, so we are all, to be honest, internally uh, trying to find out the different opportunities that in every single market we are going to experience based on that. So to simplify it a lot, uh, Viber has customers, customers who spend time making social life. Uh, what we need as an e-commerce company is Customers and Rakuten is actually uh, a business model based on what we call discovery shopping, the social shopping. So we don't want the com we don't want the customers to go to to shop. We want the customers coming for shopping. So when you are talking about shopping and social and, and social uh, behavior of the customers, this has a lot of relation which the the companies like Bieber has. So there is clearly a, a, a strategic alignment. But I cannot tell you specific actions that we're going to do for the next for the next coming months yet. Uh, any comment from you about the social network or something? How this is affecting the the, the sales process of the users' experience uh, in your personal experiences? Well, our, our experience it's it's short on, on on that, but we are we are succeeding first of all in in incrementing or in in. In getting a better uh, intention to purchase, first mm -hmm. of all, so recommendations and and the social environment, it, it's a great opportunity for intention to purchase, and we are succeeding in converting uh, brands engagement to purchase through the through the social networks, but but it's uh, still a lot to do, and it's not easy at all to balance between. Uh, Respect and and do not do okay. not be a spammer in, in in these social networks, <laughs> and uh, take advantage of this engagement of the user to to convert it to sales. So, but we, we are far away from what we can do, and we are succeeding in in this uh, little test that we are doing with big brands that are, su are supporting manufacturer brands that are supporting Ula Box in in this small test. Okay. More questions. Does it work? Yeah. Hi, I'm Irenia Casas from InfoJobs. Uh, thank you very much for sharing all this knowledge. Um, I'm interested in your clothes future. I'd like to know if you're uh, running some kind of experiment combining e-commerce, mobile, and social network. And um, also, uh, I'd like to understand if there's any advice that you can give us in order to set the goals uh, focused on mobiles and comparing from desktop experimentation. Thank you. The question is for Snoop. You have to choose one. Okay, so Lucas. Lucas Carne from Privacy. Okay. Well, we have worked a lot in e-commerce, social, uh, e-commerce mobile, now mobile social. Uh, I said that uh, now mobile is 50% of our new customer acquisition and probably uh, Facebook is providing us 50% of those new customer acquisition and Facebook has released products in the last year that are performing very well. Now uh, we are experiencing new products uh, from Facebook to really help us not acquire new customers, but monetize our current customers. 
And we are also thinking on how to integrate communication between customers in the real-time shopping experience. We are a leisure company. Shopping is a leisure activity, and it's usually done socially. So we are thinking on how to integrate, for example, WhatsApp in the shopping process to be able to communicate in real time and to share with other friends what you like or what you intend to purchase. And it has been traditionally important in Privalia because uh, historically 30% of our customer acquisition has been through the recommendation. So clearly, I mean, we, we have done a lot of things and we are okay, good. still Anthony, pushing. Anthony, comment on that? No. Just, I would like just one comment. In terms of uh, uh, when you're talking about tips, uh, I think I always talk about tips in terms of this channel, this other, etc. For me, everything ends using the same business rules. Everything is about CAC against lifetime value. If you make it work and you properly kind of analyze everything, it doesn't really matter what device the customer is using. So, of course, you have to understand that the channels are integrated and the customer behavior is going to be totally different. So. You have to change the, the, the acquisition strategy. You have to change the things that the customer segmentation. But at the end of the day, there are just two things you have to look at: acquisition cost and lifetime value. And this is exactly the same for any default device or channel that you look at. Okay, more questions. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is working. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your presentation. Um, I would like to ask about the platform. If um, you started, if you again or you start the next week the e-commerce business uh, would you go for ios iphone uh, android responsive all together if you had to choose one of them and which one and why even i may ask thank you yeah, i start okay yeah I would say that as we 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 launched in j just two year and a half uh, ago uh, I would do close to the same that we, we did. Maybe I, I would push for responsive, full responsive from the beginning, because it's it's giving a, a much more efficient maintenance and 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 uh, homogeneous of, of usage for for the end user. But I think that the iOS apps, uh, Android apps are also giving value if they are uh, specially designed for each. Uh, each environment or each context or each device. So uh, I would say that we will keep the two scenarios, so full responsive programming and design, and both apps, or maybe third and fourth in terms of BlackBerry and, and Windows, uh, w when we, uh, Symbian and whatever. <laughs> but uh, I would say that if we are able to develop functionalities and, and, and services that gives value to creating an app, it makes sense because it's about loyalty. And e-commerce, it's about loyalty. So I will keep both, both sides. Hi, my name is Polo Villamil. I'm the CEO and founder of Lamas Mona, which is an online rental fashion service. Um, Lucas, you said uh, you were looking at, um, you spoke about avatars and 3Ds. And uh, I think it was last week that eBay bought Physics, which is a virtual showroom um, company. Are you guys looking into that? Because what I've been looking at is that it's not truly ready at this point, and none of my customers are, are, really going, are really going for that. What is your opinion? Well, uh, I, I don't know what, what will happen. I, I think it's an interesting idea. I think uh, we will look at this, this type of initiatives, and at the end, it will all be about conversion and, and return on investment. For Privalia, uh, it's not easy because uh, we are a flash business. So uh, every day we produce, like uh, I was telling, 5,000, 6,000 new SKUs, and these are on sale only for two, three days. So we need to make sure that uh, it's not only conversion, but we are also cost efficient. So the challenge is how to integrate these new features into a factory uh, with uh, a high productivity requirement and where cost per SKU put on sale is, is very, very important. So I, I don't know, but we'll, we'll have to have a look on, on it and test it. 
I'm gonna let, I think uh, there's time for one last quick question, and I think okay. there's a gentleman here that, to the panel as well. Hi, Dan. Um, there's a question for Lucas right here. Uh, my name is Luis. I'm a well, local entrepreneur here in Barcelona. Uh, my question is, you said 30% of your users come by referrals. So you have another comp competitors around Europe, around the markets you are. What do you think it makes them come to Privalia instead to whatever, Ben Privé or whatever it is? And the second question is regarding to the other customer acquisition channels that you have. Could you explain a little bit more further? Well, in terms of referrals, uh, I, I think the main driver for customer satisfaction in Privalia is the, the offer. I mean, we, we are a clearance company. We sell uh, stock and uh, we compete to have the best possible stock at the best price. And it's our job also to try to target this supply to the demand we have the best possible way. So this is the first driver. Obviously, uh, user experience is important. Lead time, if you have returns, what's your experience with the returns, etc. But I mean, it's, it's very basic. We are a shop. And the same you are looking for in a brick and mortar shop is what you look for in in an online shop. And in terms of custom acquisition, uh, right now 50% of customer of new customers come from mobile. 50% uh, of this 50% from Facebook, and the, then there's like a 40% from affiliation networks and another 10% from Google. And from the 50% uh, non-mobile, uh, Google may be half of it. Uh, Facebook is getting share. And then there's many other small things. But uh, this, this is for paid traffic. Then we have the organic traffic, which is the, this 30%, which depends on, on recommendation. And recommendation is driven by daily orders. And, and traffic, basically. And this is driven by the attractiveness of our offer compared to other alternatives this day in the market. It's basically a user experience, you would say. Oh, the, th the referral yeah, well, part. Well, it's an element of user experience, which is, do they have the products I like, or do they have the best price? OK, I think that it's Thanks. time to finish. I would like to say thank you to all of you three guys. Um, I think that we have been lucky, both three of you are from Barcelona, so we don't need to, to bring people from abroad in order to talk about e-commerce. I think that we have a very nice uh, hub of e-commerce in the city. In fact, you three guys are uh, members of a, a cluster of e-commerce here of the city, so I think that's an important place, Barcelona, for the e-commerce, and hopefully it's going to keep being an important hub in the future in the mobile e-commerce. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody. Uh, it's time to finish.